China versus the United States. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. We can see the battle that continues to unfold, but things have really changed. Big changes, in fact. What we're looking at today, I'm going to cover the real estate scenario. I'm going to show you what's happening with imports and exports. The situation with China is obvious. I'm going to give you the details you need to know so that you'll make the best decisions. I'm going to actually package everything into one video related to China, all the updates you need to know. I've been a little bit quiet on there, just collecting all this data, putting it together. Some very interesting stuff for you here right now. No more time to waste. Let's begin. Here we have it. The lead leader of China had gone to all the US CEOs from Blackstone, Qualcomm, FedEx. He meets with them and he says, hey, you've got to do business with China. You got to do business. Don't go and diversify your, you know, go out there. Don't do what Apple's doing. No, no, no. Don't do that. Stay with us. We're cool. We're good. We're going to make sure everything's all good. Uh, we're going to, you know, find common ground. There's a problem, of course, with this whole offshoring um that had happened that was very beneficial to china however now there's the friend shoring and near shoring i'm going to tell you why some of that is completely bs it's not happening and i'll explain why that is the case we're going to look at a few other things i want to show you this though china shock 2.0 sparks global backlash against a flood of cheap goods emerging economies join the us and europe in shielding domestic manufacturers from a rising tide of chinese imports you have to understand that china is fantastic at logistics they've got it dialed in in fact they actually work on logistics in other countries you see them building the ports you see them doing the mining they have the whole system running very smoothly so they've been doing this for a while and you got to understand how did that happen? Oh, it must have been some bad politicians and they, you know, let this occur. Like it's been going on through all this whole time, throughout the whole time, there's been, you know, all a number of different people in place and they have been not only contributing to the problem, but actively telling people this is the way it has to be. You don't want to work in dirty manufacturing. You don't want to be the type of person that makes a low wage. You want to make a real good wage, right? Oh yeah, the American dream, this is it. And so what happened was they started offshoring all the jobs, offshoring all the pollution. They said, look, this is the way it's going to be because you're going to get the cheapest products you can and everything's going to be delivered to you with no inventory needed. We got this thing called just-in-time inventory. It's fantastic. We got it figured out. And then 2020 came and people really realized this is not a good idea. It's too late though. It's already too late. So China has their logistics dialed in. We know that. I mean, you go to seek out a supplier from China and you try to do that same thing in your own country, United States, Canada, whatever. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing trying to deal with manufacturing in the United States and Canada. Hey, I want this. These are my specs. This is it. Can't even get replies from them. Forget about it. You can't even get replies. Oh, you do get a reply? Oh, your minimum order quantity, you want 500 of those? No, no, I don't think so. You need 50,000 at minimum. Oh, now we got a problem. You see, this is the thing that's happening all over the place, completely uncompetitive in every way. I understand there's, you know, runs a little bit different, but that's why they have remained so far ahead. But now what's going on is the wages have increased inside of China. Other countries looking a little bit more attractive and there's no issue. Like if you're looking at India, there's no problem with the relations in between United States and India, for instance. So that looks attractive for them if you're seeking out a supplier. So we got to understand what's happening here why Chinese companies are investing billions in Mexico. And so there's no question about it. The Chinese businesses see this. They're like, hmm, what are we going to do about this? Because there's, you know, the potential. We'll see what happens towards the end of the year. You're looking at it and you think to yourself, hmm, okay, well, let's just open up factories inside of Mexico. Wait a second. Doesn't that like go around, like beat around the bush here? Yeah, actually it does. You don't have to worry about the problems being put in right now because uh, you're made in Mexico. So that's 
friend shoring. That's near shoring because it's Mexico. What about if you did the same thing in northern Italy, where there's all kinds of factories, those factories owned and operated by the same Chinese companies that would have been doing that inside of China, they do that in northern Italy. They do this everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Okay, you can't move all the manufacturing over, but some companies could decide to do that. And they don't have to necessarily employ people that are you know, locals. They could bring their people over. This is what goes on. And people, they don't, they're not going to wake up to that. Of course not. They're never going to know about this. I talk about this with, on my Sunday Business Live. Uh, this is the reality. This is how it works. Okay, You get around anything if you have to. And they're doing that. Friendshoring, nearshoring, let's be honest about it. It's not everything. It's been sold. Although, I understand. I, I do understand. Okay, um, Looking at this, imports from China to the US are rising at the fastest rate since last fall. Okay, And there's no question about it. We look around and we can see that in the in the case of the United States, they want a lot. I know pe people say no, but they want goods from China. Why is that? Because they're cheap. If you want inflation to remain under control, you need to have cheaper goods. A lot of those goods are coming from China. And so you've got a problem here where this country can manufacture faster, cheaper than you can in the United States. Um, you know, there's a lot of complaints about what China makes and things. Um, you can actually actively ask your supplier for any level of quality. If you want something that's 47 cents, you're going to get something that's worth 47 cents. But they also do make, you know, the Mac computers, which are fantastic. They make all these chips there and they do that in China. So, you know, it's not just one sided. You just got to remember that. Okay. If you want cheap stuff, you can get cheap stuff. You can get cheap stuff in other countries as well. You can get it in Vietnam and Cambodia and wherever you want. So this right here just gives us an idea of what's happening with China. They're like, obviously we're averaging out. You can see for yourself inbound cargo at US ports on average going up and up and up and up because you offshore all the jobs, and so all the manufacturing takes place inside of China. If you want more stuff, domestic consumption, that comes from other places of the world that's being manufactured. There's no very little manufactured in the United States today. Yes, there's some, but let's, let's be honest. This is referring to the Canton Fair. Canton Fair is basically the if you're looking for supplier, if you're looking for products, this is the biggest, I believe, in the entire world, Canton Fair. Um, something that is kind of a big deal for people who, who uh, sell physical products. For this year's fair, the key word will be low price, whether it's low tech or high tech products out of China. Since domestic demand for goods within China is much lower than usual and overcapacity is high across most industries, manufacturers have to cut their prices to achieve more exports. They want more exports. They want to manufacture stuff. They don't want to be sitting on their hands. They want to do it and they are willing to do so at a lower price. That means their margins are going to squeeze going to be squeezed so this goes for everybody on the sunday business live session understand two things right here what i just explained low price is the key word as well as the fact that exchange rates are still very favorable and so that's important you're paying in us dollar they realize that okay and so they're going to get that situation where they you know they love it anyway here we have it when we see um you know low price this means for individuals out there that they have to do their best in negotiation so that you can get the better price they're willing to do business they're, they don't want to just not do business it's just at what price right it has to make sense for them so just keep that in mind at the same time you could see how they're doubling down on manufacturing in in china because of what's going on with your real estate 62 trillion dollars at one point what's the value of that now i'm not so sure but i can tell you that the manufacturing sector is hard at work to keep the economy going all right 
this is um, just basically talking about, you know, the situation within, you know, the back and forth, the tit for tat between the United States and China and referring to tariffs. Now, I understand the idea of tariffs. You put a tariff on to make it so that if you're going to buy from the outside, that it's more expensive. Okay, it's a penalty essentially from trying to source products from outside of your country. Makes sense. But what does this do? Does it fix the problem? Does it actually prevent anything from happening in the future? No, no, no. It doesn't do that. What does it do? It makes those products more expensive. And so you got to pay that higher price. You got to understand if you if you were to try and source a product from your own country, compare that to a product sourced in a number of other, you know, developing nations. It's not a little, it's not 20% more, it's not 50% more. It's dramatically more expensive, dramatically. If it, if you even can, in a lot of cases you can't. I've, I've looked, believe me, I've looked. So um, that is worrisome because it shows you that that whole side of everyday things that we use, we cannot even manufacture it ourselves. We can't even do it. We don't have the, there's no capacity to do it. And you want to change that, it takes a long time. It takes effort. Patent applications from Chinese inventors pass U.S. for the first time. This is very big. Now, you who knows what kind of patents these are, but it still shows the sign. Now, obviously, at the same time, uh, you just look at 1.4 billion people. Uh, you're, the numbers just it's obvious that at some point that was going to happen uh, but we'll see what goes on obviously chinese tech right now is getting squeezed because of the united states netherlands japan they're basically saying no no no, we can't have them get the semiconductors that's a national security interest we got to squeeze them on that however five years down the road well i'm interested to see how it goes for china trying to basically say all right we're going to do it on our own then I don't know. I, th I think uh, that'll be a challenge. There's no question about that. China's EV export boom fuels surge in demand for new car carrying ships. Now think about this. There's so many cars that they're exporting that they need to have proper ships to bring these things on. So what's going on with the EVs? You could see that in the case of, you know, if you're in the U.S., let's say, you're in the U.S., you want to buy an electric vehicle. You have to pay a premium price for an electric vehicle. That premium, you, you know, some people say I justify it because, you know, the tax rebate the government gives me and over, a, you know, the extended period of this vehicle, I'm going to get uh, save money because the gasoline prices keep going up. And so electricity is cheaper and that. So this and that. So, you know, it makes sense over a long period of time. But, you know, that's the, the argument, right? What if those cars are 10 grand? Well, that's what China's doing. They're underpricing, undercutting all the other manufacturers out there. They can manufacture very, you know, comparative cars in electric. You might argue in, in a gas powered vehicle, um, but in an electric vehicle, what is this? A battery and four wheels, okay? It's a go-kart. So that type of thing, or I should say a golf cart. That type of thing is going to become a challenge, but what these governments are doing is saying, they don't meet our standards. They don't meet our standards, we don't want that. Look, the Chinese products are everywhere in and everything, and um, I don't know, I, I think it's more to protect the industry. I think that's really what it's about. It's not about standards. They're just saying, we, we can't beat that. There's no way, like we'll be putting out so many people out of work. So don't let those things come into our country. That's interesting, isn't it? China's crude oil imports hit a record high in 2023. Clearly, they are making more. They are doing more now than ever before. You look at Saudi Arabia, the relationship between China and Saudi Arabia expanding as time goes on. They're becoming good partners and they're buying more and more oil. All right. So you got to see this from all different levels. I wanted to break down everything that's been happening inside of China. This is, you know, when we talk about product selection, when we talk about uh, manufacturing and sourcing, I get really excited about it. A um, little inside uh, note here, this video, this is the second time I'm recording this video because I forgot to hit record or I hit it, but it didn't 
register. But anyway, I really get excited about this topic. It's just so fun to see it all. And on the Sunday Business Live, where people are having those successes already, we're starting to see the growth there. And I hope that you'll become part of that group. I want to see you in there. If you can't make it live for those sessions, you can still get the recordings, though I want to see you there live. I think there's much more value in that. And if you want to find out about that, link is at the top of the description. And don't forget to come back tomorrow. Take care.